Isabel, welcome to Beyond the Inbox. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us about your background and how you got started with Last Object? Yes. Uh, well, my background is in, um, uh, I have like a mixed uh, education. So I'm from, um, I have a bachelor's in uh, IT, um, digital media and design. And then I did a master's uh, in uh, co collaborative designing. So um, at the Royal Academy of Design here in Copenhagen. So it's very, um, so it's kind of a, a digital, but very designy background. Um, and it started, I got involved in Last Object or created Last Object. Um, well, now it's four years ago. Um, and it was with um, one of the, my brother is one of the other co-founders and our, um, our other design friend. We're all like, um, we're all designers, actually. Uh, they're more product designers where I'm more collaborative design. But uh, but we were actually doing a lot of different things. We had the same um, work. We were working in the same office. Um, and I think at that point I was doing ho hospital equipment for different hospitals. Um, so medical uh, or in the medical industry. And and they were doing some more like classical Danish design furniture. Um, and it, we just, it kind of emerged in a, what do we actually want to use our life on? Like we would what is the what is the meaning of everything and and where we put our energy and that's where last object evolved and we started looking into where if we had to do something if we had to design something where could we make a huge difference and uh, and that's um, that's where last swap was uh, was created from that thought and we started listing all the single use items that we could replace because we saw that if we could replace you know thousands of something with one item, uh, we could really make a difference for, um, for oceans and for trash in general. Can you talk about the term collaborative design? Because as far as I understand, it, it's quite a new term and it's quite fascinating how it involves other people. Can you speak on that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, it was the best two years of my life. <laughs> we, um, it's a design. Well, in general, you kind of in the design industry, um, you tend to to create like kind of a loan because um, you're either, you know, making garments or making um, bigger things. And you maybe talk to other, uh, you know, designers on how to collaborate. But a lot of the things that we actually create are to very specific people. So um, co-design or collaborative design is a method where you are designing with people. So it's not about you as a designer, it's more about how you can facilitate design processes with a group of people. So I think a good example would be, I worked a lot in, ho in the hospital industry and I would work with patients, with nurses, with doctors, and understand what they were going through like on a daily basis. Also, how the um, disease that they had, how that affected them, how we can design something that would be comfortable for that. And actually getting them to design it and just giving them tools. Maybe they can't draw, but they can move around with them different items and we can feel different fabrics. And there's so many things, there's so many ways to explain what you want in different situations. So um, yeah, so that's co-design. <laughs> For listeners that might not be aware, can you describe what Last Swap is and how that idea came about specifically? Yeah. So last swab is a reusable uh, cotton swab. Um, has nothing to do with cotton, but uh, it's the most um, known phrase, Q-tip. And um, it was, we wanted to make reusable, or we wanted to create um, an alternative version, a reusable alternative version to single-use items. And so we needed the Q-tip to be washable. So it's a washable Q-tip. And, um, and by creating that in, in Element, so our swab is um, like has the same like very thick stem, so it can it can take a lot of um, uses. And then the ends, the one we have different versions, but the ones for for the ears that's most like popular and and most known, what you use Q-tips for. And uh, that is a kind of a surface, a closed surface um, of a kind of rubber. It's TP uh, um, TPE, so which is a thermoplastic. So it's kind of like silicone, actually, but it but the other plastic binds better to 
the other component. So it's completely a closed surface. So you can wash it and reuse it and wash it and very durable. Um, but it has a surface that is kind of bumpy, uh, which makes it good to grab your it works. I was watching the Kickstarter video before this interview, and I wanted to ask you, can you share the launch, how that was, some of the learnings that you had from it? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, uh, we've we done Kickstarters before, and um, and this was, I think, about two weeks up until the launch. We kind of, we could see that we were converting quite crazy on just our pre-launch email um, signups. So that's where we thought, like, that's where we realized, like, shit, we're actually, maybe we hit something here. <laughs> maybe we actually made something that's, um, uh, that's going to survive for a long time or something where we, yeah, we hit something. There was something that actually people wanted. And um, uh, so that was quite crazy. And then we went live. Uh, I don't, I think it's, we, I think we got funded in 18 minutes or something like that. And it was crazy. That was the most crazy day because you were just like updating the website and and people were just like, um, yeah, pouring in and putting their money on our products. And we didn't even have the products yet. It was uh, Kickstarter is all about, you know, give, getting your design out there and seeing if um, if it actually resonates. And then if you get if you sell this many items and you put like a, a bar at the like amount that you need to get into production. So, um, so that was pretty crazy. And then the campaign ran for three months Um, yeah, that was a pretty, pretty crazy. And it got to a really big size and we were very happy. We had 20,000 people that have put money into something we hadn't even created yet. So that was, a, that was really fun. Then we used it the next couple of months trying to figure out how we actually would solve it. Why do you think the campaign was so popular? Do you think more people now are making a concentrated effort to think more sustainably? Or do you think there was another reason why? Or do you think it was maybe a combination of several things? I think it was a combination of several things. I think one, holistically, yes, the world is changing and people's mindsets are changing and they're putting money into eco-friendly alternatives. People want to live a more zero waste life. And um, so that's one. Two, it's the swap was kind of the brilliant ill yay factor. So half of the comments on Facebook would be like, Jesus, that is disgusting. Seriously, guys. And the other half would be like, oh my God, that's amazing. I need two. So we got this, we got a lot of um, bad and good uh, traction, which made it quite viral. Um, so a lot of people actually ended up seeing it and, and, and seeing the ads that we could, we converted crazy on ads so we could really use very few money on, on getting, um, people in and, and backing also afterwards when we got the product out. So there was that factor too. And it's kind of also gadgety. It's the perfect Kickstarter product. We've done other Kickstarters since that have been more female oriented. And that's a bit more hard because the, the, um, uh, the people on Kickstarter are male dominated and they're very gadgety. So it was also kind of perfect for that. It was a unisex product uh, that everybody could buy. And it was also kind of a funny thing you could give your roommate, you know, so it's and the price point was something everybody could, yeah, enter. I think it's so fascinating because at least from my perspective, when I think about sustainability sometimes i think i have to pay more or i have to go without something that makes what i usually pay for worth it but with the swap it's so stylish but it also makes sense because you're no longer spending more on hundreds of swaps you're buying one and you're reusing it and i love on the website as well how you even talk about the number of usages per unit so i think that's a really nice way of conveying value on the product page as well yeah, definitely. Yeah, and some of our, our products, they, you don't have to use them that many times before you're breaking, e like even economically, um, because some of these products are expensive, actually, single use, if you just want something that's at least just um, ecological um, cotton or something like that. So um, yeah, definitely. And it's also a lot of our customers ended up loving the product so much. So we have so many people that have everything in our collection um, because if if you kind of 
if you need this and you want to be sustainable, you also need this, you also need this, you also, you know, it's, um, yeah. So it, it, it is, um, people really, it's a good community to get into. It's an amazing community. I want to come back to community, but for our listeners that aren't familiar, can you talk about some of the other products within that collection? Yes. So after the swab, we did um, the tissue, uh, which is, well, you can kind of um, imagine it as like a, a, a handkerchief, had a baby with a tissue pack. That's kind of the best way of like seeing it. So it was like, it, it's as, as big as a, a tissue pack so you can carry it around. And then, um, and then you can, um, and then you take the, the handkerchiefs from the bottom and you, it's hygienic because you have a, there's a barrier where you put the dirty ones on top and the clean ones in the bottom. And that's actually the product that I use the most. It's absolutely amazing. We also did different versions, like home, like a, like a tissue box kind of version of it. And then we went into rounds. So that's, um, uh, reusable cotton rounds, um, that you can wash in the washing machine, wash by hand, whatever. Yeah, whatever you feel like it has, that was, it took us a bit longer to, to develop because of the fabric we want. We want all of our products to be so close to the single use experience as possible so that it's a habit that's easy for you to build in your everyday life. And, um, and it's, uh, it's as soft as cotton. It needs to, to be wet to get that texture, but it's absolutely amazing material. And we did, we've done like um, normal rounds, like you would, like you would get when you buy the normal um cotton rounds and then also a bigger version for like full face makeup and a black version for like nail polish or really tough makeup and then um, and then after then those still rounds then we also uh, gotten tipped into some menstrual care products so um menstrual pads washable menstrual pads um, that are really there are some on the market, but they're very home sewn. So we wanted to make some like a really exclusive, nice, sexy pad. Um, it's because that's the period of your month that you feel the less sexy. So we really wanted to make it really comfortable. And uh, we have different sizes, different colors. Um, yeah, I think that's we just launched um, a wash or uh, actually uh, laundry detergent sheets. So it's a, like you would have like powder normally or you would have a, a water or like liquid soap for your washing machine. Um, and a lot of people came to us and were like, what should we buy? What laundry detergent should we buy? So we started researching and it's absolutely awful what they put in the laundry detergent we have in the market now. So we wanted to make like an ultra clean, ultra compact so we don't ship around um, things that are unnecessary. So it's like an an ultra compact little sheet that just washes all your clothes. Um, and it's, uh, it comes like in a little pack now. I actually just got a new order home today and it's, uh, they're, they're just getting better and better. But, uh, but it's like ultra clean has no, no soul fades. No, you've taken all the, the shit out of it. <laughs> I wanted to ask you how your thought process around sustainability has changed over time. I know you became a parent in the last couple of years, and I wanted to ask how that influenced your thought process around single-use products. It's absolutely amazing how much, how many single-use items you actually consume as a, as a parent. Um, I didn't, beforehand, it was more like, you know, my cafe latte cup and things like that. And now it's like full-on diapers and wipes and and straws and like things that you actually didn't use beforehand. Um, so there's a massive, it, it, it took a turn in actually what products, that's why I said that the tissue is actually the one that I, um, I use the most now. Um, and that my, my son is so happy about, he can even use like my product and he puts it in the right place. And yeah, it's very cute. But, uh, so there was some, there's a shift in, in the products that I wanted to make afterwards. Um, and there's also a shift in in what products I actually use the most myself now. So I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about the marketing for the brand. My first question for you on this subject is how does Last Object acquire new customers and what strategies have been most effective for the company? Sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, sure. What strategies have been most effective for the company when it comes to acquiring new customers? Oh, I think it's changed through the years. Um, in the beginning, we were really good on Facebook. We were really good on 
on ads and um and then when kind of when TikTok came on and um we were popular on doing like TikTok y reels but on Instagram. Uh or yeah, that's in reels. So uh that was a really nice way of like being able to go viral a bit so that we could go out and reach um, some customers that didn't know about us. Um and and then like general Google, we we've actually done almost everything now. Right now, because the world is changing constantly and we you have to keep moving um your uh, your time and your energy and, and your content around so that you're getting the most value out of it. Right now, partnerships are making a big deal for us and um, partnering up with other eco brands so that, you know, oh, you like this soap, then you actually maybe will like this um, a Q-tip. Or if you if you want a really nice bathing suit, then you should buy this one. Like pointing to, because we have a really good um, understanding of, of what is greenwashing, what is not. So it's... Um, it's really cool to collaborate with brands that are are in the same track as us trying to to make a difference um and the customers tend to really like it so we kind of cross into some new groups of yeah content um uh, some new some new groups of, of people that would be interesting interested in somebody like us we've also been very successful like a year ago like one two years ago on pr like um podcasts and getting on um yeah getting on BuzzFeed getting in articles um you know top top 25 re- products that you need for a zero waste lifestyle like getting into to articles like that um because I think a lot of people get their inspiration uh, through lists so yeah yeah a lot of different things I want to dig into that a little bit are you doing PR actively or are you acquiring links organically at this point based on the size of the brand? We did a big run on it. I have, I do a collaboration with um, like a little um, woman, oh, where they're actually only women. <laughs> um, that was just a one man show at the beginning. And now I think she's, she got like uh, three people on board. So it's like a really small PR company uh, in the US that has been. Uh, that are, is our contact. So they do some, they, they, they reach out, um, but it's very little now. It's, we're just like, um, we're just hanging, taking the low hanging fruits. So nothing major. And what about partners? How are you actively recruiting partners? Is it you or someone on the team DMing someone that you see on Instagram or is it something else? Yeah, we tried. Actually, we did, we just did like a list of 200 brands like us. And then we just cold emailed them all, found like um, their emails and, and emailed them to see if they wanted to do some kind of collaboration. We're doing something um, new email wise. And, and that was, um, that was uh, so-and-so successful, I would say. Um, now I found a lot of uh, platforms. We just got B Corp certified or a couple of months ago. And that has kind of, um, that's a little bit easier because then you kind of can connect with other B Corps. And together, it's just easier to set something up. Um, yeah, so it's been, it hasn't been very structured. We're, tr- we're, still, we're tr- still trying to figure out what is the best way to actually connect with people. Um, it's also just like our local network here in the startup community in Denmark, where you know somebody that knows somebody, and then you can actually get the ball running pretty quickly. Yeah, the Danish marketing community is very close-knit, that's for sure. Yeah. What about community? You mentioned that earlier. And what does community mean to Lost Objects? I think community was what kind of sprouted everything for us because the zero waste community, people that are really into trying to figure out what what to take out of their everyday life, what habits, what products, what methods, what ideas they have. Um, They all have different platforms that they talk about or you follow the same kind of things on Instagram, like it's, it's a very, um, or you read the same articles. So I would say it's really like, I'm, I'm part of that community too. Like always searching for what should I change? What now I, uh, need to buy, you know, this and this, what should I buy so that I can make the biggest difference and, um, or not buy. <laughs> and, uh, and I think, uh, 
that's absolutely amazing. And to be part of that, and it's actually quite crazy how um, much demand they're actually asking, which is amazing. So, so it's so uh, in the community of zero waste, they're actually very skeptical about where is it produced, what material, um, how, in what way, you know. And that's amazing because we we love to really get into like the nitty gritty of why is this created in the way? Why is this? Because sustainability is also such a big word that kind of um, can be interpreted in so many different ways. Well, maybe it's good for the water. Maybe it's good for the earth. Maybe it's good for the wind. You know, it's it's different. It's different things that um, that actually affect the planet. So some really, yeah, look at the animals. Some really, and it you can do a lot of different things in a lot of different areas, but it's hard to be a hundred percent on all. So you, so it's kind of also trying to explain that you can look at this in many ways. We can look at the water consumption. We can look at the, um, the outlet of microplastics. Um, but, uh, it's all very, very important topics to actually understand. So I would say it's a community that really is very well educated, um, in this field, in what is sustainable and what is not, and what is greenwashing, what is not. And because everything is changing constantly and this plastic was so sustainable for, you know, a, a couple of months ago. And now it's really not because now we know how we can not discard of it or discard of it. So uh, it's really interesting. I want to come back to sustainability towards the end of the interview. But I do want to ask you about something that you and I discussed in the pre-interview, which was email. What role does email marketing play in Last Object and how are you using email to grow the business today? I think I think emails now for us is just um, we have much better conversion. Uh, people have time to really read, follow us, and and uh, and it often um, and one email is just worth a lot. Where a follow on Instagram is not necessarily worth that much. Um, it's also hard to uh, track, but still, uh, and an email really it's it's easier to track and it's um, it's very important for us. We've actually really shifted. Uh, our focus in general, like not growing our Instagram account that much, but actually growing our email list because it's just simply more valuable for us. Um, yeah. And uh, I think the newest thing for us is that we just did a website or a website in Danish and saw how crazy that actually was like conversion wise that we can, first of all, you as a Dane will go in and, and read everything in Danish, but we can also do Danish ads. We do Danish emails. We can uh, so this the the language um, uh, switch is is pretty amazing. We can even we have in Denmark we um like use something called mobile pay for everything. For um, it's a way to pay. Funny enough, and uh, and I think eighty percent of our sales is actually through mobile pay, and it's not something that you would have if you didn't have a Danish shop. So um so I think uh, emails uh, is so great because we can translate them to so they can become part of this very interesting eco uh, of uh, uh, yeah of, of how to talk with customers in their local languages what does the customer life cycle look like does someone see an ad and then make a purchase and then they're on your email list and then they buy something else or is it more a case of there is a short life cycle where they don't need a lot of nurturing and then they make a purchase because it's relatively affordable what does that journey look like I think people often go in and then they try something out. So they'll try a swab or something. But the people that buy our products are typically the people that buy for the whole household. Because Q-tips, uh, cotton rounds, it's kind of in the same category as toilet paper. So it's kind of, you know, the head of the house that kind of buys that in for everybody in the family or in the household to, to use of. So it's kind of an interesting constellation where you'll you will get we have some really really strong it's not all but we have some really strong um um yeah buyers or uh, customers that uh, that will go in and try something out and be like oh my god and then they get all their friends and family they'll get you know the whole household and they'll stock everything up um, and then you get some really good big sales um but, uh, and then there are, of course, also just people that go in, try something out, and then they come back. Um, so it is kind of a, because it's a new, it's a new product. You don't just like jump in with um, 
with everything. You kind of you try something out and then you come back and then you're like, okay, I'll try the, okay, the rounds work for me. I'm going to try the swab. And then like the last thing is like, okay, let me get that pad. So um, it's a process. What are you doing to drive customer reviews? Do you have a workflow in place or something like that? Um, we do. Every time we, somebody buys on our website, they'll be prompted afterwards um, a week or so uh, after the purchase to see like, does it work for you? Is it good? Is it bad? And we, we use that data a lot actually to improve our products. We've um, categorically like made an Excel sheet and got everything transferred. Every time somebody has a comment and does a rating, then it'll get into our um, sheet and we're, and then we're following the numbers of the different like ratings of the different products. And then it's like, you know, this month we need to figure out how we can um, product wise get these three products up and running or better. And sometimes it's explaining more about the use case. Sometimes it's changing the actual product. So, and um, we're soon coming to the end of the interview and I wanted to ask you regarding sustainability a few questions one of which comes to mind is what is it that you think sets last objects apart from other companies in the sustainability industry I think we're first of all we're a company that is born out of sustainability we didn't make a cream and then make it sustainable we we made something that didn't exist um, a reusable cotton swab and then we evolved from there and I think that's that's pretty strong like there is we do um, LCAs and um, life cycle analysis third party life cycle analysis on all of our products like we're so focused on making the right the, the most right choice right now we can um, and uh, and just evolving as a sustainable brand. So I think like that is pretty strong for us. Um, and then the other thing is that we're three designers. So we're, we're just, we're not gonna do anything cookie cutter. Uh, and we know a lot about production. We know a lot about um, people and how they use our stuff and how, how we want to, to make this a beautiful thing. Kind of like what you said in the beginning of the interview, like the swab is like a, it's a practical, but it's also beautiful. And I think that's so important for us that it's um, it's so easy for you to use, but it's also something that you want in your in your uh, bathroom, and that's really strong for us. So um, yeah, that that would be the two things that I feel like that's where we set aside uh, from other brands that are in this uh, in this field, um, and then we're the only one who who ever yeah made reusable alternatives as a brand. <laughs> that's the only thing we sell um, for uh, for single use. What does the future of sustainability look like to you? I think it's looking good. Um, I think it will be the new normal. I was actually thinking about it. Um, my, my son has never, he's never used a traditional tissue, for example. He doesn't know what a single-use cotton round is. Like, we don't have these items, and it's... It's not anything that's ever been introduced in his life. And, and I think that this would be more and more normal. I think, well, like our, our, maybe not our kids, but then our grandkids will like look back and be like, what? You, you used a, a pad, like a menstrual pad, and then you threw it out and then you made, like, that's disgusting. You know, I think it will kind of switch where right now it's like, what, you, you wash your, your pad? That's also disgusting, you know, it's, so I think that it will shift what we think are, is, is uh, hygienic and what is not and what is good and what is not. Um, the single, we've, yeah, I'm born in a single use industry for sure. So I think that change now is going to make some very interesting generations that are going to think in a whole different way and accept in a whole different way. Right now we're looking at toilet paper like that we can never change. And actually maybe we can at some point, like we'll get there. Um, and that's, that, that's quite uh, exciting to think about. What's next for Lost Objects and what are your long-term goals for the company? I think my goals is to, my goal is to, to reach as many people as possible, um, and to change as many habits for the better as possible, uh, creating a, a very healthy and green, uh, company, uh, that really is, is built on goodness. <laughs> and in all in all fields, like uh, that, everything around um, what we do and who we are and how we, um, yeah, 
how we design, how we produce, how we ship, <laughs> like that everything is, is thought through and then, um, and is, uh, yeah, is well thought through in a green sense. Um, and I think that, I think Last Object will become quite huge. Um, there's so much potential in this area and we have so much wind. It's, um, it's amazing. So I think it's a, it's a great way. And like, our, even the people that we, uh, that work with us is, they're so excited about this. Like it's a, it's a company that you want to be a part of. It's a, it's a movement that you want to be a part of. And everybody else that like other companies they're not competitors, other eco companies. They're just like, yay, we're on the same path. Like we're, we're going in the right direction. And I think that's kind of beautiful that it's, that there's a bigger mission, um, as such for a company. And, um, and I think that, um, I think that the future is that we will grow to, yeah, bigger and we'll get into some more difficult, um, single use reusable alternatives to single use um, that I'm very excited about, but they also need a little bit more research and product development that we don't have, uh, that we haven't had resources to uh, until now. So that's pretty exciting um, to open up some, yeah, some, some not, a, not new categories, but new, just new products that are a bit more advanced. So, um, so I like that. I appreciate everything the brand is doing to normalize multi-use objects, Isabel. And I think that's a great place for us to start wrapping up. Where can our listeners go to learn more about Last Object and connect with you and the team? You can go to our website, lastobject.com, and see everything. And um, and then you could always um, text um, hello at lastobject.com. I would... Uh, I, Camilla, who's a, our customer support, she's absolutely amazing, and she can answer questions better than I do. <laughs> and then, and then, of course, our Instagram is a is a is a place that you can connect with us, but also follow us and see new launches, new products, new new exciting stories. Perfect. Well, we will put all those links in the show notes, and I want to thank you again, Isabel, for taking the time to join us today, and all the best in the future with Lost Objects. Thank you, and thank you for having me.